Okay, that got pretty exciting, right? Just like realizing, because I think um, you know blue is always just relying on those like heavy mana um, like disc battleships. Yeah, yeah. And with the heavy mana disc battleships, that like really uses a lot of your mana. And then red, I mean, what did you feel like red really relied on for units? I mean, it looks like they were trying to do a similar thing with the airships, but then they would also try and like supplement them with like infantry on the ground to sort of like create like a strong spearhead through. And it looks like it actually like it managed to break through and then. Back in the second match, when it looked like that he was gonna lose like two zero, mm-hmm. like he actually managed to sneak in his soldiers onto like the second mid row, mm-hmm. where like he just didn't expect, and it completely took him by surprise, and that's what completely turned it around for him. Oh yeah, and I mean, like you can cast some spells that um, are pretty, pretty vulnerable, right? There's like the key thing to know this game is if you play it enough, there's some really good counters, right? So, yeah. Like thundercloud yeah. like really tears up the floating fortresses. Um, which obviously I think Shell's giving us all the secrets. <laughs> yeah, right? pretty much. We but have he's, he's our in- in-game expert in the chat, which we highly appreciate. Yeah, Thank you so, so much for that. <laughs> the cool thing is, is like I noticed he is about five or six hundred points above uh, everybody else, yeah. like on terms of the leaderboards. That's insane. So um, anyway, Shell's giving us like a little cat emoji. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anyway, so, um, <laughs> Shell, if you uh, are out there, you know, we, we hope that a Kingdom Brawl continues to get bigger and better as a tournament. Um, so, like, hold on to that top leaderboard spot. You know, who knows? That could be worth millions one day. Yeah, who knows? And, you know, we would love to also see you in, like, the other tournaments that we have coming up in the other VR games. Because what I've noticed in the, like, in the VR esports world is that we have a lot of competitors who just play a variety of games. You know, it's not mm-hmm. like the traditional esports crowd where like it's just like these teams playing the same game oh, yeah, like, like year Overwatch, like 12 hours a day or like League of Legends like 12 hours a day right like you have a lot more yeah. generalists <laughs> yeah so um, Brandon is out hanging over here and we're going to talk about Renew for the rest of the show um, so just kind of that was the match we're going to cast tonight right yeah yeah and then um, we're going to do some recaps from earlier so and yeah. then Nathan I think you also have some of the brackets that we yes. can talk about yes I do which I'm going to awkwardly turn over to this side, and hopefully Twitch chat doesn't Master mind Gaming. that. Master <laughs> Gaming, gotta play them all, gotta catch them all. Yeah. Wait, I gotta play them all VR esports. Oh yeah, this this green screen covers a lot of the, the junk that we have lying around. Like, is it a fire hazard? I don't know. But you know, we're not gonna ask that question today because we are here for esports. Yeah, so congratulations to Waylon. Um, he is moving on, and... Um, yes, and he will be playing up Again, well, earlier today we had our other NA match, which was against Stu and Chael, and that yeah. was pretty exciting. We can't we can't throw this up on on the screen, can we? No, we can't. Okay, so let's just talk about it really fast, and then we'll just kind of look over the screen. So excuse us. If yeah, that, but, <laughs> um, we can actually post these much. in the Discord chat a little bit later on too. Just like throw the files right in there. Yeah, um, yeah that would be great. So we got here uh, the North American bracket. We're just going to talk through it really fast. Um, so we got It's Jason, uh, and then he played against Devin actually from Virtualities. Devin was kind of a noob. Um, <laughs> you can say that about Devin. <laughs> oh yeah, if the he part doesn't mind. So uh, yeah. our own team, uh, home team, um, lost to It's Jason, right? Stu yeah. uh, had a buy that first match, um, and then he advanced on to It's Jason. Surprisingly, um, Stu, uh, not surprisingly, Stu advanced on, even though it's Jason put up really tough, right? Yeah, well, oh, actually, for the previous match, unfortunately, Jason actually had to forfeit because he had... Oh, that's a... right, he had um, <laughs> maybe... Uh, he of... had a, I think he had his wisdom tooth pulled out the previous day, and he just was not in any condition to continue. Right, yeah, so VR Esports takes a ton of dedication and focus, so <laughs> it's Jason, we really hope you're doing well out there. Yeah, yeah, pray for a swift recovery for you. Yes, so <laughs> dental work is serious. Um, and then we got, um, you yeah. know, Tyler, Brush the man, um, and then we got Shell Disciples Gacing of Gaming, had a couple buys right there, so Shell moved on pretty quickly. Um, Shell's ranked number one, number one seed. And then we got the other side of the bracket, um, and then we had, do you want to talk about the other side of the bracket really fast? Yeah, sure. So on that side, we had Keith versus Brandon, where Brandon was able to sweep Keith pretty good. We And what's interesting, actually, is that uh, the two people who moved on to the semifinals, like our competitors just now, Brandon and Waylon, mm-hmm. are yeah. actually from the same arcade. Like, we didn't... We matched we them that. separately, mm-hmm. but they ended up coming to the same location. So that was very, like, if anything, it was a little bit that convenient. That was pretty unexpected. <laughs> so we'll go ahead yeah. and post the results, but um, Brandon and Waylon did um, those pretty well. 
just to match. So they passed um, uh, Keith from Spectrum, Brandon from Spectrum lost, the Cone Man was out, uh, Wesley uh, from Spectrum also was out, um, and then mm. Keith and then Lipara Bacirel. I was out. I hope I said that right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we got we got some pretty fierce competition to just get to the top here, and then and we have the EU brackets, right? We can just cover those super fast as well. Oh yes, we totally can. So and then um, so the EU brackets, we got um, really strong competitors. Canary, they did awesome in the Space Junkies tournament. Obviously, they did really good here too. Yeah. Were uh, they the ones? Were they the arcade that won the Space Junkies tournament? I can't remember anymore. No. So they actually, I think they got ranked fifth or sixth. Um, okay, yeah. In the Space Junkies tournament, right? I definitely remember them being up there for sure. So, um, they're actually in the Canary Islands, so beautiful islands off the coast of Spain. Oh, yeah. Um, Some of these arcades are in amazing locations. I know, like <laughs> the tourist hotspots, they make good spots for VR arcades. I want to go visit. That okay. makes a lot of sense. Um, and then you actually have uh, Israel's in the EU bracket, so um, Virality is competing, so we'll go ahead and update those. Um, but that should be exciting because so the EU champion is actually going to pay play the North American champion. Yes, which will all be happening on Tuesday the fourteenth at seven p.m. Mountain, Mountain time, time MDT. Yeah, and then really quick, we'll just cover the 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 brackets right here. So um, we had uh, uh, not everybody lives within a distance or a driving distance of a VR arcade. You know, we've had some people drive five or six hours to drive to the arcades <laughs> for our tournaments. Yeah, that was actually dedication. The, the Beat Saber yeah. one. Yeah, it was yeah. a Canadian guy who drove four hours and slept, and in, his slept in his car to compete. Right? Yeah. So, but hey, he won those. He did. So it was just yeah, like, it was yeah. worth it. <laughs> it was 100% incredible. worth it. Yeah. That's um, the real story that I won covered. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that was incredible. Like, just an incredible story that he won after sleeping in his car to compete um, at Gosh. Arcade in Canada for Beat Saber. Yeah, I really hope he comes around for, like, the next time we do that tournament. <laughs> yeah. So and that's my hope, too. Um, the, anyway, we just did. We tossed in a small. The, the prize bracket is a lot smaller for the home tournaments, but we did want to accommodate this time. So we got Master mm. Shadow Server Error, uh, Alex and Bartubi. So um, anyway, we moved a lot of their matches to the May, May 14th. Um, yeah, but yeah. it's exciting to see what they've done as well. So um, anyway, that's yes. uh, that's kind of the, the tournament where we're at so far. So we can go ahead and post those a little bit later in Discord. Yeah, and we'll be releasing information about that throughout the week. All but, right. Yeah. So for the rest of tonight, we have some pre-matches from earlier in the day. Yes, and we're just going to cut to that right now. So we're going to cast a little bit of these um, and... Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, this time we do not have the split screen where we can see like both perspectives of the opponents. But still, it's like an exciting match to watch, in my opinion. And we won't, like, I won't spoil it. I don't think you can watch this one. No, but actually, I, <laughs> I have not watched this one match in full because this was took place earlier today, right, Brandon? Yeah, so it's a couple of production guys, so shout out to yeah. So he's done production for. Uh, for um, Right? Ha, first blast. Overwatch. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Apex <laughs> Legends. So Brandon's using uh, attack and then obviously Nate. <laughs> so all valuable things on the table. Anyway, but this match is important earlier today, so we're gonna. Let's try to turn down the video sound just oh, a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Sorry about that. Let's turn this yeah. down a little bit. There just we the go. Sound. There we go. Is that a little bit better? Yeah, a little bit more even now. Okay. All right. So I was just saying, Brandon's way better than me. Rainbow Six Siege <laughs> and production of Rainbow Six Siege. I tell stories about checkers. Nathan obviously doing great for me. So, so yeah, yeah. Hey, four years got to go somewhere, you know? I know, right? <laughs> so, super grateful to have everybody on the team. Um, and then, neither of us, what we're just saying is neither of us have seen this match. So, um, what do we got here? So, let's, let's actually see if we can't blow this up a little bit and talk about this one. We're going to be letting this run through a lot of gameplay. Um, so you guys can just kind of check it out. We're just going to let you watch a lot of gameplay, but we're going to throw in a few comments here. Yeah, exactly. Looks like, well, we, looks like we jumped in at a pretty interesting point. Looks like Red Side's getting really pinched over there. Like, their, their spawn line has been pushed up pretty... It's pretty backed up. Like, they're kind of in a corner, but both towers are still up, and looks like their forces are being like... It's more, more lopsided off to the left side. So hopefully there could be a possibility for a counterattack because you know when you focus on one side you leave the other open. And maybe if you can spread the mana for it you can like have some troops circle around and attack that tower. But it looks like both uh, 
both of them have been focusing the left side from our perspective because you can see that the towers on both on the right side are almost on top for both of them. Uh, it looks like they looks like they dropped the dragon on the right side. Your favorite unit, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> dragon. Six mana, overpowered. Yeah. You saw your mana. You have nothing left. <laughs> but worth it. Wyvern, our mistake. Oh right, because you can as you play as you progress through this game, something that's really cool is you can actually upgrade your cards and upgrade your deck. So you get more gold uh, for the purpose of the competition. We actually gave players oh, limited gold through arcades. Uh, some of the at-home players actually ground grinded their way through the entire thing. So um, hats off to those guys. Yeah, and you know, just just whipping out my my arbitrary fantasy knowledge. The difference between a dragon and a wyvern is that the the dragon has all four limbs, kind of just like. Any other like quadru no, quadruped creature? Source of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then they have wings on the back, which is like anatomically does not work very well. So like, are you like dragon would just really not fly? Like it would either just run really awkwardly, or it would just not fly just because the dragon is so heavy in general. That's important to play against. This is yeah, this is true. I'm I'm a very big Dungeons and Dragons fan. I played Pathfinder and I played like. 4E. Actually, no, you, you know, let's forget that. I didn't play 4E. Like, no one needs to know that. But I play a lot of 5E and a lot of other tabletop games. But, like, a Wyvern in general. A Wyvern is typically it looks like where the front hind legs are also the wings. And so it's only really got its legs to stand up. Yeah, yeah, kind of like a parrot. Skill. Skill. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, here we actually got a lot of. Can you give us a quick update right there on the Nathan on the action right there? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a tiny screen that we're looking on, so we're trying to we're trying our best to. The shell is <laughs> same. Depends on what lore you go with. But, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's fair. I will definitely give that. For sure. Yeah, it looks like it's actually evened up. Like even though Red Side has lost both their towers, like the spawn line has actually moved up, and it's actually might be a little bit of a turnaround here. This actually looks like a fairly close match. I mean, you got some of those thunderclouds right there in the middle. <laughs> yeah, and you got yeah. both turrets on red side. A little bit hard to see on blue side, but you got both turrets still on red. Yeah, it looks like red is actually like doing a really good job over here because like all their turrets are like very close to the to the end over there. And we've got like their little sniping balloons, and, like taking the little pop shots, which are definitely doing their work over time. Yeah, and, it's, and if you can protect them the whole game, then they're pretty gold. And it looks like the red has a pretty strong front line with the wyvern and like a 10 billion troops just closing in on that. And it looks pretty decisive in my opinion, even though the match is about to end in 5 seconds. There definitely won't be any other than this. Hey, yeah, and that looks like, that looks, that looks like victory. Yeah, actually, did you ever notice that rainbow on the left side? I never noticed that. No, I didn't. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look played... at that. Red one. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, like, I've played this game before, but I feel like I've never noticed that rainbow. Like, maybe I was just so... I was looking down around my hand the whole time. <laughs> and it looks like they're just going to adjust their cards really quickly. Oh, no, they're just going straight in. Taking a peek. <laughs> you know it. Yep, so actually, yeah, here, so um, you can adjust your, your deck in the middle, right? There's actually, yes. so there's a lot of stakes on this. Um, so, Victory just quickly to remind everybody ours. at home, um, there's actually a thousand dollar prize pool for this tournament, which is pretty impressive. Yep. Um, for the first year esports tournament card based battle ever. You've drawn first and blood, my um, the other thing is that the grand prize actually also gets these two tournaments. Yeah, which so is it's five hundred bucks <laughs> and that's that. So first exactly. place, there's actually quite a bit right. It's quite substantial, and I think like in our history of our, that's our second biggest prize, if I'm not mistaken. Well, Arizona Sunshine and um, Island Three Five Nine had a pretty big prize pool because they were combined. That's true. Um, we had a ton of headsets um, for Space Junkies, around four thousand five hundred total worth of headsets plus half prizes for that one. Um, so this one is pretty substantial, just right in line with some of our other tournaments. You can't retire on that yet, but it'd be a pretty good day. Your mana is too low to play so. that card. Yeah, for real. Pay my rent for a little bit, you know? <laughs> I know, right? You can at least play like one month of rent. So, yeah, VR exactly. Esports, um, actually, if you, if you want to compete for money, join the VRDSL League. Um, you sent some players right to there. Like a good part time job, so yeah, no kidding. Yeah, um, I think right here, like, we're seeing a match that Thunderclouds are a continuous favorite uh, for 
over here. Oh yeah, yeah. well it's like, it's kind of like doing two things at once, you know, it's like it's taking out those air so those air troops, air but also right? covering you, so that you just can't play as well for, for my D&D players out there, you know, Devil's Sight, Darkness, Combo, the ultimate level 2 cheese. Level 2? Yeah, level 2. <laughs> so, um, you know, Red is actually, he's... Mostly spawning down that center lane, it looks like, right? Yeah, I think I exactly. the Marauders. He's kind of sending the Marauders to the side. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of trouble spawning over there, but I need to it right there. Yeah, so it looks like. Um... Yeah, which is great, because it, it actually, like, as you can see from this point of view, it's pretty much covering the two lanes. Like, you, can, you really can't see what's happening behind that. Cloud if something were to see. It lasts for a good amount of time. Right, yeah. I feel like that's probably like probably one of the things we've seen here in the meta and emerge in the tournaments, right? Like the thing with like VR esports is like the games are always like trying to find the balance, like which cards are OP, but I think as we've seen this tournament, like the Thunder Cloud is definitely yeah, and you know, like, what I think, like, interesting games in general is how underrated vision is. Because, like, you know, anyone who's ever played, like, Smash has the items turned on when they, like, have the puppies come on screen and suddenly you can't see anything. Yeah. It's just, like, it's oh, super the annoying. Are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're fighting against any AI, they're just like, oh, I don't care. Like, I don't need this vision. Yeah. <laughs> it's only you. And same with, like, in League of Legends, like, one of the biggest things they talk about is vision control and how that can, like, make or break games between people. And we can see the same thing happening over here. Which I think is very cool because then it's a like pretty advanced mechanic to work with. Yeah, yeah, certainly. So we actually got, um... Yeah, oh, so but a looks lot like of damage Blue turrets. is pushing. Yeah, most turrets are down, but the... And troops are just kind of, like, all over the place. Some more of those blind fortresses, more marauders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're sniper in the air, just taking their pot shots. We got, a deal we got one dragon. But I don't think he has the resources to. Yeah, there's just. This is just. Oh, dude, you got the giant oh man with the arms. I can't even remember the name of the unit right now. Yeah, no, me neither. Oh, man, but it looks like they're in big trouble there, which is. Even though the spot line is so far up, I think they might just be going for base first because they're just ignoring. Oh, dude, there's one that's going to here and it really doesn't matter. You can actually look around the, the cloud, right? You can't do that in League of Legends. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. I wish. Oh, uh, so close. Uh, yeah, which, speaking of which, well, something that happened really funny and like, it's, it's great that we have the at home tournament because it allows like a lot more accessibility for VR and tournaments and just getting the community to play against each other in like a more competitive environment because there was actually a very funny spat with CLG with the CLG Academy team because one of their players couldn't get their visa approved. And so they played remotely for the tournament. And it was funny, on the live stage, they actually had a cardboard cutout of their teammate just sitting in the chair playing for them. Visa problems, real Hilarious. Life. Yeah. Yeah, VR Esports is so new, right? And so, like, whatever, whatever, people are just doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, it looks like the timer is actually running low, so we might actually go into overtime over here. And, like, both towers are down, so it's just going to like, yeah, yeah. Super good. Yeah, oh no, it looks like the game actually just ended. Just on the cusp of it. Oh, oh, yeah, there we go. Radically throwing down some cards. And we got. Hey, well, that was pretty good 2 0. -oh. <laughs> there we go, we got the top of everything. <laughs> Yeah, no, you gotta you gotta figure out your like your victory celebration pose, you know? Yeah. Like the flip. <laughs> cool. Okay. And that's the conclusion of that. So, um, anyway, guys, we have loved doing this tournament. Um, it's been really cool. Um, you know, I think a lot of people in the go to an arcade, they'll like choose like the standouts like Job Simulator, Arizona Sunshine, obviously another Vertigo games title. Yeah. Um, but this is something pretty new. Um, you know, they, they took a risk and it actually works a lot better for arcades than like the tabletop that are like five or six hours because most people are going to arcades for just like a half hour, an hour with their friends, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, particularly like this kid friendly too, like they can just jump into it. So, yeah, exactly. Um, that wraps up. So, congrats to the winners for tonight. We'll post the results in Discord a little bit later. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to catch everything next week for the finals. Yeah. And so, we're going to wrap up the EU, North American, Home.
Yes, next week. Everything. It's going to be a pretty busy day on Tuesday, but yeah. we all look forward to it. Maybe Which I'll tell forget. some more checker stuff. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll come up with more random facts to keep people entertained. <laughs> or the same ones. Hey, I don't know. I got hey. a little bit time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're just a little one-trick pony with your checkers <laughs> with my checkers trivia. Back. 3500 BC, checkers. Yeah. Every Back year down. at the same Christmas work holidays, like, hey, you know about checkers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. But yeah, anyways, that's it for today. Thank you yep. so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you on Tuesday, 7 p.m., May 14th, and in Mountain Standard We're Time. We're going to wrap up the finals. <laughs> that was so close. Yes. Woo. Let's go. All right.